and we now know that the pre-development flow for this particular site is going to be 0.49 cubic meters per second just writing that down and we're going to go to look at the post development so i'm going to i always keep two separate files so i'm going to go to my project settings i'm going to go over to my stormwater and i'll change it to the post development Great, we can then press OK. Here you can see I've taken the roads into account. So your 1 in 5 will be flowing into the pipes and your 1 in 20 will be flowing along the channels in the road uh, towards the stormwater pond. The stormwater pond I've also created as a uh, catchment because there is going to be water falling on that area into the pond and I'm flowing that into the first link so that that water can be accounted for. We can run the analysis on this now. I'm going to use the same 1 in 20 storm file but for the depth of flow we can ignore the 80% full for the designing of the pipes because I'm going to use the existing network as previously calculated. I previously calculated using a 1 in 5 storm event. The reason for this is I want to size the pipes for an up to 1 in 5 storm event and then run the analysis for a 20 year storm event for the overflows to the pond. You don't want to size the pipes under, underground for anything above 1 in 5. Again, this will be applicable to different municipalities, will have different return periods for the underground infrastructure. And here you can see that we're having a flow of 0 0.595 cubic meters per second. And that will be your post-development flow. So we need to uh, throttle that to 0.49 and build a pond to store that water.